All right, guys. So not the best camera in the world to do this with, but something is better than nothing. I'm going to pull this up on my uh, phone just so I can make sure that I've got everything working right. Looks like the audio is good. The video is good enough. It's the best I can do. So Sunday morning, welcome. Um, I don't get to do a lot of this, so I'm glad I got this chance. What I wanted to do tonight or today is go ahead and respond to a comment question that came in through the Facebook group. Uh, for those of you who aren't members of the free Facebook group, it's the Total Knee Replacement Support Group for Kind People. You can find it on Facebook. It is a closed group, but it's free and I'm, you know, not as active as I'd like to be in there, but it's an amazing community of individuals who are either planning on having a knee replacement, have had a knee replacement, are supporting people who are having knee replacements. And there's a huge community of amazing therapists, physical therapists and occupational therapists who contribute a ton of value totally for free in that group. So the question that came in that I wanted to answer, um, I'm going to do my best to read it. It's a little bit hard for me to see it on my screen while I'm recording, but this came in yesterday. So starts high a few days ago. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. Uh, eight weeks after total knee replacement, this individual has fibromyalgia and has been uh, doing great with her low back pain until recently. So since the surgery, she's been having some trouble with ga gaining flexion. She's at 93 degrees. So 93 degrees at eight weeks uh, is a challenge for her. And, and I can understand. That's frustrating. I've got a handful of patients even that struggle to get to 90 degrees at four weeks, at eight weeks, at 10 weeks. But I have seen them do really well with persistence. So she's at eight weeks. She's at 93 degrees. Of flexion. She doesn't have any information in here about extension. Um, she said the problem is that the exercise is starting to bother her low back. And so she doesn't know which way to go. If the back causes her problems, then she can't do the knee exercises. And of course, if she can't do the knee exercises, she's concerned that she's going to lose range of motion. She's worked so hard to gain the 93 degrees she's had. She has. Um, she's asking if anyone else has been in the situation. Now, I have worked with a lot of patients who have fibromyalgia. In fact, earlier in my career, before I kind of gravitated toward total knee replacement, fibromyalgia was one of my main treatment kind of demographics because I was a private practice owner. I still am. I had a small clinic that could really focus and cater to treating individuals with fibromyalgia. It's a completely different treatment protocol than treating somebody who has a standard orthopedic injury, you know, so where I was in sports medicine originally, I was a strength and conditioning specialist. I worked with a lot of athletes in both high school, college. Um, that's a very different, different demographic than an individual in their fifties and sixties and seventies with fibromyalgia. So I can empathize. Certainly, I don't have it. I can't relate directly, but I can empathize. And I've seen a lot of experiences from patients who have had rotator cuff repair surgery, total knee replacements, and fibromyalgia has been a complexity uh, inside the rehab program. Oh, somebody posted, had my left total knee. Um, gosh, I need glasses, guys. <laughs> Staples out last Monday, able to bend, still able to bend much. Okay. Let me know what your flexion is. So once the staples came out, people do tend to say that they gain flexion more quickly. I would love to know what your flexion is. But back to the original question at hand. How do we handle somebody who is trying to exercise for their knee replacement, but they have other issues? you know, in this case, fibromyalgia. And in this post, she also goes on to say that she had a UTI, a urinary tract infection. She did the antibiotics. I can tell you right now. Um, I don't know if you guys saw, I've shared videos about this. When the body is dealing with something like an infection, whether it be a cellulitis that happens down in the lower leg, whether it be a UTI or whatever, even something as simple as common seasonal allergies, 
the immune system is going to battle and deal with those other problems. And in the process, you're going to experience orthopedic pain in other areas of the body. So I know that anytime that my immune system is gearing up to fight something, my left thumb is almost unbearable. I can barely do anything. I can't open a door or do anything. It's the base of that left thumb. Um, and it's my left toe, like a gout kind of pain in my left big toe. So I would tell you the fact that you had the UTI probably is what made you more susceptible to flaring up the low back pain. And now that the UTI is kind of under control, I would expect that the low back pain symptoms will start to resolve a little bit. But what you need to try and do is manage the intensity of your workout. So in other words, where you might go to therapy and do 40, 50, 60 minutes of activity, it's probably going to be too much for you at this point, even if you have a great therapist who can manage the dosing. There is going to be times exercise is a drug, just like anything else, and the dose is important. If you take a, a subclinical dose of exercise, you're not going to get any improvement. But if you overdose on exercise, you're going to develop a harm, harmful effect of training. So what you're looking at right now, and in the post, you said that you were two years old, which is amazing. Congratulations. Um, really trying to manage the dose of exercise, just like you'd manage dosing of any other medication. And where some medications, your doctor might tell you to take a half a dose in the morning and a half a dose in the evening, exercise is no different. So what we need to find for you is understanding the fibromyalgia, understanding how it affects your body. There's probably episodes in the day where you're at your best, probably times in the day you're at your worst. Take advantage of the good times, kind of give yourself a break on the bad times. Look for the exercises and the activities that don't flare up your low back, but do allow you to maintain mobility. Something as simple as finding a position where you're seated or reclined and you can allow that leg to hang unsupported so that gravity is pulling you into flexion. That should not affect the low back in any way. That should be a low intensity dosage of exercise. And maybe you spend three, five, 10, 15 minutes in that unsupported gravity assisted knee flex position. We know that aquatic therapy is amazing for fibromyalgia. We know that at eight weeks, you might be at the point where your surgeon allows you to start doing aquatic exercises. If you don't have access to a pool and your physical therapist doesn't have access to the pool, you might look at finding a local um, physical therapy rehab center that does have a pool. I have had lots of patients that have fibromyalgia They've passed the point where they're allowed to submerge the knee in water. And I've discharged them from my care because I knew that access to a rehab pool was more important than anything I could do in the clinic myself. So your therapist should be fully supportive of you transitioning care from their facility to a place that has an aquatic program, a local YMCA or something like that. And even if it's not an official therapy program, Maybe you continue to do your therapy or dry land therapy with your existing therapist, but you find a pool that would allow you to get in there for a month, two months, do your exercises, unload some of the tissue in the spine, um, and, and just manage the fibromyalgia. You're, you've got a lot of plates that are spinning, if you, if you remember that analogy, and you want to manage them the best you can. But I typically find that there's a time to push and there's a time to recover. You're in a recovery phase. Manage the dosage. Don't do more than you can do. How do you know what more than you can do is? If you do it and you feel worse later, it's too much. And so it's trial and error. Nobody has a formula. Nobody can tell you this is what you need to do. You just need to figure out, okay, today I can do five minutes on a recumbent bike. Tomorrow, I might only get two minutes. The day after that, I might get 10 minutes. It's always going to be varying. And that's where I think the skills of a therapist or just you knowing your body, knowing what you can tolerate will get you the progress more quickly than if you try to stick to a fixed regimen. There is no fixed regimen for your situation right now. 
give your body time to heal, give your body time to recover, focus on the range of motion in ways that allow you to do multiple exposures throughout the day so that it's not 20 minutes solid of push, 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 but maybe it's two minutes in 10 episodes as opposed to one episode of 20 minutes that makes your back hurt so much you can't do anything the next day. It's the total dosage that matters. So guys, I want to thank you for trusting me and taking the time to post these comments because you are willing to post these comments. I'm able to provide some feedback, some information. I certainly don't have the answers. I'm just giving you some better questions to ask perhaps, but I think that this goes a long way in helping other people who maybe don't post their questions, but have the same questions or didn't even think of this as a question. And hopefully they get to watch this video and gain some, gain some knowledge and some peace of mind. Otherwise, there's 12 of you on the live stream. I appreciate every one of you spending time with me this morning. And I'm going to wrap it up. And I'll, I hope you guys have an amazing week.